Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. Welcome, everyone, to our latest video where we'll be exploring For Whom the Bell Tolls. For Whom the Bell Tolls is a novel by Ernest Hemingway published in 1940. It tells the story of Robert Jordan, a young American volunteer attached to a Republican Durrelly unit during the Spanish Civil War. As a dynamiter, he is assigned to blow up a bridge during an attack on the city of Segovia. It was published just after the end of the Spanish Civil War, whose general lines were well known at the time. It assumes the reader knows that the war was between the government of the Second Spanish Republic, which many foreigners went to Spain to help and which was supported by the Communist Soviet Union and the Nationalist Faction, which was supported by Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy. In 1940, the year the book was published, the United States had not yet entered the Second World War, which had begun on September 1, 1939, with Nazi Germany's invasion of Poland. The novel is regarded as one of Hemingway's best works, along with The Sun Also Rises, A Farewell to Arms, and The Old Man and the Sea. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards background. Ernest Hemingway wrote For Whom the Bell Tolls in Havana, Cuba, Key West, Florida, and Sun Valley, Idaho, in 1939. In Cuba, he lived in the Hotel Ambos Mundos, where he worked on the manuscript. The novel was finished in July 1940 at the Intercontinental New York Barclay Hotel in New York City and published in October. The story is based on Hemingway's experiences during the Spanish Civil War as a reporter for the North American Newspaper Alliance and features an American who fights alongside Spanish guerrillas for the Republicans. The novel graphically describes the brutality of the war and is told primarily through the thoughts and experiences of the protagonist, Robert Jordan. The characters in the novel include those who are purely fictional those based on real people but fictionalized, and those who were actual figures in the war. Set in the Sierra de Godama mountain range between Madrid and Segovia, the action takes place during four days and three nights. For Whom the Bell Tolls became a Book of the Month club choice, sold half a million copies within months, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, and became a literary triumph for Hemingway. Published on October 21, 1940, the first edition print run was 75,000 copies priced at $2.75. The book's title is taken from the metaphysical poet John Donnie's series of meditations and prayers on health, pain, and sickness written while Dunn was convalescing from a nearly fatal illness published in 1624 as devotions upon emergent occasions, specifically meditation XVII. Hemingway quotes part of the meditation using Donnie's original spelling in the book's epigraph. Dunn refers to the practice of funeral tolling, universal in his time. No man is an island, in tier of itself, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Moving ahead, let's uncover the hidden gems within plot summary and discover their significance. Robert Jordan is an American, formerly a professor of Spanish language at the University of Montana. He had lived in Peru or Spain, and fights as an irregular soldier for the Republic against Francisco Franco's fascist forces. An experienced dynamiter, he is ordered by a Soviet general to travel behind enemy lines and destroy a bridge with the aid of a band of local anti-fascist guerrillas to prevent enemy troops from responding to an upcoming offensive. On his mission, Jordan meets the rebel Anselmo, the old man, who brings him to the hidden Dorella camp in the Sierra de Guadarrama mountains between Madrid and Segovia. Anselmo initially acts as an intermediary between Jordan and the other Dorella fighters. They include Augustin, Primitivo, Fernando, brothers Andres and Eladio, and Rafael, often referred to pejoratively as the Gypsy. 
In the camp, Jordan encounters Mara, a young Spanish woman whose life has been shattered by her parents' execution and her rape at the hands of the Falangists part of the fascist coalition at the outbreak of the war. His strong sense of duty clashes with both the unwillingness of the guerrilla leader Pablo to commit to an operation that would endanger himself and his band and Jordan's own newfound lust for life, which arises from his love for Mara. Pablo's wife, the strong willed Pila, with the support of the other guerrillas, displaces Pablo as the group leader and pledges the allegiance of the guerrillas to Jordan's mission. When another band of anti fascist guerrillas, led by El Sordo, is surrounded and killed during a raid they conducted in support of Jordan's mission, Pablo steals the dynamite detonators and exploder, hoping to prevent the demolition and to avoid fascist reprisals. Although he disposes of the detonators and exploder by throwing them down a gorge into the river, Pablo regrets abandoning his comrades and returns to assist in the operation. The enemy, apprised of the coming offensive, has prepared to ambush it in force and it seems unlikely that the blown bridge will do much to prevent a rout. However, Jordan understands that he must still demolish the bridge unless he receives explicit orders to the contrary. Lacking the detonation equipment stolen by Pablo, Jordan devises an alternative method, exploding the dynamite by using hand grenades with wires attached so that their pins can be pulled from a distance. The improvised plan is considerably more dangerous as the guerrillas must be nearer to the explosion. While Pila, Pablo, and other guerrillas attack the posts at the two ends of the bridge, Jordan and Anselmo plant and detonate the dynamite, costing Anselmo his life when he is hit by a piece of shrapnel. While escaping, Jordan is maimed when a tank shoots his horse out from under him. Knowing that his wound is so severe that it is highly unlikely that he will survive and that he would slow the others down, he bids farewell to Mara and ensures her escape to safety with the surviving guerrillas. He refuses Augustine's offer to shoot him and lies waiting in agony, hoping to kill an enemy officer and delay the pursuit of his comrades before he dies. The narrative ends with Jordan waiting for the perfect opportunity to launch his ambush, if he does not go unconscious or die first. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding characters and gain a fresh perspective. Robert Jordan, American University instructor of the Spanish language and a specialist in demolitions and explosives. Anselmo elderly guide to Robert Jordan. Goals Soviet officer who ordered the bridge's demolition. Pablo leader of a group of anti-fascist guerrillas. Rafael well-intentioned yet incompetent and lazy guerrilla and a gypsy. More Robert Jordan's young lover. Pilar Pablo's wife. An aged but strong woman. She is the de facto leader of the guerrilla band, Kharkov Soviet agent and journalist in Madrid, and a friend of Jordan's. Augustin Falmout, middle-aged guerrilla. El Sordo leader of a fellow band of guerrillas. Fernando, middle-aged guerrilla. Andres and Eladio brothers and members of Pablo's band. Primitivo old guerrilla in Pablo's band. Jokin enthusiastic teenage communist, a member of Sordo's band. As we move forward, let's uncover the untold stories and fascinating intricacies of imagery. The novel contains imagery of soil and earth. The imagery appears rather famously at the start of chapter 13. Jordan and Mara have sex in a meadow in the forest. He feels the earth move out and away from under them. Then afterwards he asks Mara, did they feel the earth move? To which she responds affirmatively. Variants of this phrase have become a cultural click, often used humorously. Moving ahead, let's uncover the hidden gems within references to actual events and discover their significance. The novel takes place in late May 1937, during the second year of the Spanish Civil War. References made to Valladolid, Segovia, El Escorial, and Madrid suggest the novel takes place within a build-up to the Republican attempt to relieve the siege of Madrid. The earlier Battle of Guadalajara and the general chaos and disorder and, more generally, the doomed cause of Republican Spain serve as a backdrop to the novel. Robert Jordan notes, for instance, that he follows the communists because of their superior discipline, an allusion to the split and infighting between anarchist and communist factions on the Republican side. 
the famous and pivotal scene described in Chapter 10, in which Parla described the execution of various fascist figures in her village, is drawn from events that took place in Rhonda in 1936. Although Hemingway later claimed in a 1954 letter to Bernard Berenson to have completely fabricated the scene, he in fact drew upon the events at Rhonda, embellishing the event by imagining an execution line leading up to the cliff face. A number of actual figures that played a role in the Spanish Civil War are also referred to in the book, including Thies and Drunin, one of the founders of the Workers' Party of Marxist Unification POUM, the party mocked by Kharkov in Chapter 18. Imrik Ilster, communist leader who played important roles during the defense of Madrid. Mikhail Koltsev, Soviet journalist was the Kharkov character in the story in Delecchio Preto, one of the leaders of the Republicans is also mentioned in Chapter 18. General José Mirja, in charge of the defense of Madrid in October 1936, and General Vicente Rojo, together with Preto, are mentioned in Chapter 35. Dolores Eberori, better known as La Pachinaria, is extensively described in Chapter 32. Robert Hale Merriman, leader of the American Volunteers in the International Brigades, and his wife Marion, were well known to Hemingway and served possibly as a model for Hemingway's own hero. Andrew Marty, a leading French communist and political officer in the International Brigades, makes a brief but significant appearance in Chapter 42. Hemingway depicts Marty as a vicious intriguer whose paranoia interferes with Republican objectives in the war. Karol Wyshevsky, a Russian general of Polish origin as goals. Francisco Franco, commander of the rebel army who will become the ruling dictator after the war. With our curiosity piqued, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of critical reception and impact and its fascinating intricacies. On November 5, 2019, the BBC News listed For Whom the Bell Tolls on its list of the 100 most inspiring novels. With that being said, let's now move on to censorship. In 1940, for whom the bell tolls was declared non-mailable by the U.S. Post Office. In 1973, the book was banned in Turkey because the book included propaganda unfavorable to the state. On February 21 of that year, 11 Turkish book publishers and 8 booksellers went on trial before an Istanbul martial law tribunal on charges of publishing, possessing, and selling books in violation of an order of the Istanbul Martial Law Command. They faced possible sentences of between one month and six months imprisonment and the confiscation of their books. Turning our focus to language, let's explore its key elements. Since its publication, the prose style and dialogue in Hemingway's novel have been the source of negative critical reaction. For example, Edmund Wilson, in a tepid review, noted the encumbrance of a strange atmosphere of literary medievalism in the relationship between Robert Jordan and Maria. Additionally, much of the dialogue in the novel is an implied direct translation from Spanish, producing an often strained English equivalent. For example, Hemingway uses the construction, which is an implied translation of the Spanish construction. This translation extends to the use of linguistic false friends, such as from instead of strange and from instead of trade union. Brace yourself for a deep dive into Pulitzer Prize snub as we explore its impact and relevance in our evolving narrative. In 1941, the Pulitzer Prize Committee for Letters unanimously recommended for whom the bell tolls be awarded the Pulitzer Prize for the novel for that year. The Pulitzer Board agreed. However, Nicholas Murray Butler, president of Columbia University and ex-officio head of the Pulitzer board at that time, found the novel offensive and persuaded the board to reverse its determination. No Pulitzer was given for the category of novel that year. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into in Spain and its impact on our understanding. In 1944, the book was first published in Spanish by an Argentinian publishing house, Editorial Claridad, with many subsequent editions produced either in Argentina or in Mexico. In Spain, it was initially viewed very suspiciously by the Francoist censorship office, In the Spanish diplomatic corps went to great lengths in trying to influence the final edit of the Hollywood film based on the novel, 
which was not permitted to be shown in Spanish cinemas. Since 1953, when The Old Man and the Sea was published in Madrid, most of Hemingway's stories and novels have been published in Spain. However, this was not the case with For Whom the Bell Tolls, although the novel was at times discussed in the press. Prohibition of the book's publishing was rescinded only in late 1968. By the end of the year, Pork Wine Doblin Los Campanes had been published by Editorial Planeta. Let's now venture into the realm of adaptations and explore the fascinating intricacies it holds. A film adaptation titled For Whom the Bell Tolls, directed by Sam Wood, was released in 1943 starring Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman. It was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor and Best Actress. However, only the Greek actress Katina Paxini won an Oscar for her portrayal of Pyla. Cooper and Bowman later reprised their roles from the film for a radio adaptation broadcast on Lux Radio Theatre. In 1988, it was re-released with the inclusion of scenes cut from the original release. In 1959, a television adaptation for whom the bell tolls, directed by John Frankenheimer, was broadcast in two parts on Cook's Playhouse 90 starring Jason Roberts and Maria Skell as Robert Jordan and Maria, with Nehemiah Pasov as Pablo, Maureen Stapleton as Pyla, and Eli Warwick as the Gypsy Raphael. In 1965, the BBC produced another television adaptation for Whom the Bell Tolls, as a four-part serial and a miniseries in American English. In 1978, the Teikorozuka Review adapted the novel as a musical drama produced by Star Troop and starring Ran Uchiri as Robert Jordan and Kora Haruka as Maria. Cosmos Troop revived the show in 2010. In October 2014, the novel was dramatized in a two-part series on BBC Radio 4. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding documentary and gain a fresh perspective. The 2012 film Hemingway and Gellhorn depicts Hemingway's time in Spain during the Spanish Civil War when he was completing work on For Whom the Bell Tolls and his relationship with the American novelist, travel writer and war correspondent Martha Gellhorn, who he credited with having inspired him to write the novel and to whom he dedicated it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.